Hello and welcome to my easy to understand guide to Sims free play and industry. This video is going to be particularly relevant for you if you're studying AQA A level because Sims free play is currently a set video game on that specification. Sims free play is uh, a game that has been developed and published by two companies together. That is EA Mobile and Fire Monkeys Studios. So they are the two kind of developing companies that were involved in this. Both of those companies are subsidiaries of um, electronic arts. So, um, you know, this idea that they are um, electronic arts, EA is a, is a massive video game company. They are responsible for some really big franchise games like FIFA, Command and Conquer and Mass Effect. So they have quite a, a, an existing success in video games and therefore perhaps have some pre-sold audiences themselves. EA as a company is both horizontally and vertically integrated, which means that they can develop the games themselves via things like EA Mobile and Fire Monkey Studios, but they can also publish the games themselves too. So they were the people that published the game as well. And that means they don't have to outsource publishing to another company that saves them money and gives them more power and creative control. EA is a big company. EA Mobile, which is one of its subsidiaries, is based in the US and has over 800 employees. And that's just for EA Mobile. Um, they have nine offices globally. So um, it's, it's very, very reflective of the fact that mobile gaming has become a really big industry, uh, both in Britain and around the world. Lots of audiences now veering away from console games and into mobile gaming. The parent company, EA, um, has nearly uh, $6 billion of income every single year. They have 9,800 staff and they operate out of 44 studios worldwide. So an insanely massive video game company. A company called Mexis originally developed the Sims franchise um, and EA, I guess, recognised the potential of this game and bought them out. So it horizontally integrated Mexis into their company and then Mexis and, and that idea then became their idea, which was developed by EA Mobile and Firestarter, uh, sorry, Firemonkey Studios. So um, it, this horizontal integration, the buying out of other companies that are your competition potentially is a great way of of increasing your own profits and shutting down the competition for your other games. The game has been hugely successful. 200 million people have installed the game to date. And that was a, probably a few months old now, that statistic. So a huge number of installs. The game is available in 11 different global languages, which really helps it to target a global audience. Of course, the digital distribution of games like mobile games via things like the App Store, it's much cheaper than console based games available as hard copies like on disc. So um, mobile gaming has actually reduced the costs for a lot of um, video game developers and publishers. Having said that, there's obviously very different production practices involved in mobile gaming. With a normal game that's released on like a disc, um, you, you build up and up and up, develop the game and then release it and sell it in the shops and you're done. Whereas with a mobile game, it has to be constantly updated all the time. Um, sometimes those updates are to reflect updates in mobile phone technology. So when a new operating system comes out, you have to upgrade the game code as well. But also updates to, to make sure that audiences are still playing and still logging on. Um, and that's particularly true of these freemium games, these games that are free to download, but where they're making their money off of in-app purchases. You have to keep people visiting the game. Uh, it's not just about getting them to download it or buy the disc. You have to keep them visiting the game and hopefully try and encourage them to buy things within the game. And the only way you can do that is to keep updating the game to make it seem more exciting. So um, EA was able to do this by constantly updating parts of the game to add new things in. So the ability to add a second story onto your home in Sims Free Play was, a, was one of the updates. The ability to have pets, um, the ability to have a balcony, the ability to buy a pool or build a pool. These were all updates that were added on after the initial game release. 
This was all to encourage audiences to keep playing the game, to return time and time again, and to keep making in-app purchases. Those in-app purchases, don't forget, are how they're making their money on this game. So encouraging audiences to spend real life cash on simoleon coins and things like that, that they're gonna need to buy some of the stuff packs within the game. That's things like clothes, uh, it could be furniture, it could be um, you know add-ons, uh, all sorts of things that you can buy within in the, the kind of Sims store. To earn extra revenue, EA has also formed some synergetic partnerships with other companies working with brands to offer them opportunities to advertise within the game. That could be in-app um, pop-up advertising or it can be sponsored content within the game. So, for example, EA worked with uh, Moschino, a clothing brand, and offered them the opportunity to sponsor one of the more recent updates so that um, the brand's uh, clothing could be featured within the app store for players to purchase. These synergetic partnerships um, offer opportunities for further revenue to be earned by EA. If you have a think about Hesmond Halg and his idea of minimising risk and maximising profit, constantly driving people with those updates to keep playing the game is a great way of maximising your profits. The fact that Sims Freeplay is based on the Sims franchise, an existing successful franchise, audiences would already be familiar with it and perhaps might have played it on PC or on consoles. So having it then released as a mobile game and as a free version of the mobile game um, was a great way of, of maximising your profit and minimising your risk because it was part of an existing franchise. They marketed the game using a trailer, which kind of picked out the best parts. It showed some of the new parts to the game, this idea of being able to be pregnant in the game and have a baby and then watch it kind of grow up. So, um, you know, marketing these new features to audiences using the trailer. And of course, the trailer was posted to their social media pages like Facebook, Twitter and on YouTube as well, as well as other a range of other content on their social media channels, which helped to engage an audience. PEGI is the regulatory body for video games, uh, along with the VSC, so the Video Standards Council, um, works alongside the PEGI regulations. They gave this game a 12 rating certificate, and that is because it has mild references to alcohol, sex, and other adult themes. So I guess because the characters, um, you know, can ha uh, have sex, have babies, um, you know, and that there might be drinking within the game, that kind of thing, it means that they gave it this 12 certificate. Although the game does show things like sex, nudity, drinking, etc., um, it does so in a reasonably censored way. So the game makers actually use a kind of blurring filter um, to kind of block out any graphic content to try and make sure that the game isn't too graphic for younger audiences. This would hopefully make the game uh, more acceptable around the world. Now, 12 certificates used to be quite a good way of, um, you know, any age certificate was quite a good way of restricting an audience when games were available on disc. But actually, when a game is available on a mobile, there's very little checks going on about who is downloading that game. So mobile gaming has caused quite a lot of issues in terms of the regulation of these games. It's difficult to regulate an online game as well because there are different rules, different laws in different countries. What is acceptable and allowed in the UK isn't necessarily the same as what's acceptable and allowed in other countries. In fact, Sims Freeplay is banned in seven other countries, in particular within Asia. Um, and that is primarily because the game allows LGBTQ relationships. Um, and so uh, it's within certain other countries where things are perhaps culturally different, uh, legally different. The regulations that we accept within the UK um, are not necessarily regulations that um, encompass the whole of the world and what is acceptable in those countries. The audience is really important for the companies involved, you know, because you need to keep them happy if you want to keep them visiting the game. So responding to audience requests is important. The makers, EA, actually did quite a lot of interviews with the players of Sims and asked them what they wanted in a freemium game. And pregnancy was one of the things that they said came up time and time again. So pregnancy was incorporated within the game. So responding to fan suggestions is a great way of trying to engage those audiences into playing your freemium game. 
So that was my easy to understand guide to Sims Free Play and Industry. Don't forget to check out my channel for lots of other videos about Sims Free Play and indeed all the other set text keywords and theories for you on AQA A level. Um, if there are any videos that you would like that I don't already have, please leave a little comment below and I'll see what I can do.